Welcome to the Monitoring Resources tutorial on metric method mapping for a protocol. First, a quick refresher on the components of metric mapping. Methods are systematic, standard operating procedures for collecting data, measurements, or analyzing data. Metrics are values resulting from the reduction or processing of measurements taken at a site and a temporal unit at one or more times during the study period. Indicators are values resulting from the data reduction of metrics across sites and temporal periods. These are typically a status, condition, or a trend. You can think of metrics and indicators as the parameters, variables, or covariates that you use to meet your protocol objectives. So why do we map methods to metrics and indicators? Mapping methods to metrics and indicators enables you to check that every metric or indicator can be calculated, determined, or estimated by a specific method or set of methods. Mapping also suggests preferred methods to other monitoring resources users that have similar variables and parameters. To map your metrics and indicators to methods, go to monitoringresources.org and log in. Once you've signed in from the home page, click on your portfolio and select My Protocols. Next, select the draft protocol you'd like to work in. From the protocol, click on Edit Protocol. Now scroll down and select Metrics and Indicators. Here you can see which metrics and indicators you've already added to your protocol if you've already added some. If you haven't added any metrics or indicators to your protocol or would like to add some more, you can click on the Add Metric or Indicator button. First, notice that you can choose whether you'd like to add a metric or an indicator. Metrics and indicators are specific to your particular protocol, so you can be as descriptive as you want when you title them. Once you have titled your metric or indicator, you can now categorize it. Categorizing your metric or indicator will help other monitoring practitioners or analysts find it, and it will suggest potential methods for you to add to your protocol. Once you have categorized your metric or indicator, click Save. Now you can see in my metric and indicator table that I have added a fish length metric. To map this metric to one of my methods, I can click on the caret to expand the metric and then click Add Method. The metric pop up gives me three options. The first is to map this fish length metric to one of the methods I've already added to this protocol. I can check multiple methods from this list if they apply to my fish length measurement. However, none of these really specifically measure fish length. I also have the option to add a suggested method based on the metric categories I designated when creating the fish length metric. If I scroll down a little, I can select measuring fish length, fork length, and measuring fish length, total length. These two methods I know are good methods, but if I need a little more detail, I can click on more to make sure. If I couldn't find any suggested methods that measured my metric, I could search the entire method library for finalized methods. But since I know these two methods work for me, I'll just scroll down and click Save. Now those methods are mapped to my fish length metric. To finalize your protocol, each metric must be mapped to at least one method, and each indicator 
must be mapped to at least one data collection and one data analysis method. If you scroll up and go to your methods section, you'll notice those two fish link methods have been added to this method list as well because they are now part of your protocol. Thank you for listening to this presentation. And feel free to email us at gs-monitoringresources at usgs.gov with any questions or suggestions.